Good evening. It's uh, 7 p.m., so welcome to our Monday, June 5th meeting. Be it res or moved by Martin Lang, seconded by Stephanie Jaworski, be it resolved that the regular council meeting of the 5th of June, 2023, be called to order at 7 p.m. All those in favor? Any if opposed? Seeing none, carried. So we will stand for the singing of the national anthem. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, moving on to the approval of the agenda. Are there any amendments as required? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. We have one item that is uh, being removed from the agenda this evening, that being item 7B, the report regarding the Williamstown Fire Station roof, roof options. There are also a number of items that have been requested to be pulled out of the consent agenda for discussion under item nine, items for consideration. Those being items 10A, the data call overview, 10B regarding the boil water advisory in May, item 10C, the Glen Walter Water Tower Public Information Center summary, item 10M, women of Ontario say no, item 10Q, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing letter, and item 10U, the resolution regarding insurance costs. Okay, so moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Trevor Bougie. Be it resolved that the Council of the Township of South Gary approve the agenda as amended. All in favor? Any if opposed? Seeing none, carried. Approval of the minutes. Um, moved by, or are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay, wait. Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, seconded by Martin Lang. Be it resolved that the minutes of the following meetings, including closed session minutes, be adopted as circulated. Public meeting minutes, May 15th, 2023. Previous meeting minutes, May 15th, 2023. All those in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none, carried. So now we will move into our presentations and delegations. Uh, alteration of Green Road, Gore and Spring Creek. Jocelyn Lapierre, are you here? Or okay, great. If you could, if you could just uh, sit there, and also the um, just press the button and uh, wait until it should go red, and you should be fine. I have uh, paperwork to hand out. It has pictures, so my presentation will follow the pictures. Um, Terry, my husband Terry will pass them out. Thank you. because a lot of this has to do with pictures, so it's easier to explain. Terry, there's only six, so it's gonna have to be one per table. Sorry, I didn't know how many were gonna be here, so I don't know if they need any back there. Just, the just the five up front, okay. so we're fine that way. Sorry, first time. <laughs> That's fine. <coughs> So 
so I can begin or? Okay. <laughs> all right, uh, East West unopened road allowance um, to all council for the Township of South Glengarry, Lachlan McDonald, Martin Lang, Trevor Bougie, Sam McDonnell, Sarah McDonald, Stephanie Jaworski, and others. My neighbors, spouse of myself, Lucy Shaver, J.D. Hood, Wendy, Steve Small, Sue, Terry, and myself, Jocelyn LaPierre, are here to discuss the East-West Unopened Road Allowance, pin number 67124-0083, that was approved at council meeting held on May 15, 2023. This request was made by Robbie Smith for his own personal use as a shortcut to his properties that already have full frontal access from the Glen Road. It appears that this was done with no regard to the negative impact that this would have on his neighbors. The amount of destruction and disregard of wetlands, the natural drain manipulation, causing flooding to our properties and to the bylaws set forth by the township for previous road allowances by Mr. Smith is overwhelming. We are here today to ask council to revoke the approval of opening this unopened road allowance so that we can continue the peaceful enjoyment of our properties, maintain our property value, control our privacy and security, and not have to deal with noise of large farm machinery in our front slash backyards at all hours of the day and night let alone and if the four-wheelers, skidoo clubs, and others realize that this can be accessed freely. We hope that you take the information of the following presentation to reconsider your approval, or the approval, sorry. If your decision is to not reconsider, then we ask that you take our concerns seriously ensure, and ensure that Mr. Smith strict, strictly adheres by the Bali Law number 33-14. <clears throat> For the length of this presentation, we are us, meaning Lucy Shaver, J.D. Hood, Wendy, Steve Small, Sue Small, Terry and Jocelyn LaPierre, accounting neighbors. He, meaning Robbie Smith. You, your, meaning the council members for the Township of South Glengarry, Lachlan McDonald, Martin Lang, Trevor Bougie, Sam McDonnell, Sarah McDonald, and Stephanie Chorowski. Point one. It is unsure where the actual road allowance is located. Therefore, access should not be permitted until this proper, the proper survey of the road allowance is conducted to avoid infringement on neighboring personal property. As owners of adjacent properties, we should also have access to this information so that we know where our property borders are as to protect our land. By Law 33-14, Section 4.4-2. Mr. Smith, number two, Mr. Smith has already removed trees on this road allowance without permission from you. See picture one and two. They should be in order. The first one is an aerial view. If you look at the arrows, you can kind of see in the tree line there, there's a break in the uh, tree line. This is uh, McGilvery's land, part of lot seven. Road allowance, pin number 67124-0083, aerial view. On the attachment of the two uh, pages that were separate from the original, you can see a ground view on the first page looking into the McGilvery's land where the trees have been removed. I will touch base on this again after. Uh, number three, he has full frontal access to hit all his properties from the Glen Road. He is only looking for a shortcut across the rear property of the property at the expense of his neighbors. A proper culvert at the LaPierre drain would give him access without the impact to multiple neighbors. By the way, he has already installed culverts to be able to cut the trees on his property. See picture four and the aerial view, picture eight, there are, there's no trees on that road allowance either. So we ask you 
Why can't he work his fields in the same way? Number four, he has drained wetlands, swamps, and rerouted waterways. See picture five. That are suitable to him at the expense of his neighbors. See picture six. This is water being diverted to the neighboring property. And I ask all of you, do you know if that's on the property or on the road allowance? Number five, protection of endangered trees and wild garlic. We have a butternut tree that is right in the road allowance. This tree needs to be protected. See picture seven. And the orange line that you see, there's, according to the ruling, there's three meters of tree line, six meters of road, and three meters of tree line. That orange line is three meters of tree line, six meters of road. So he is like less than two feet away from that tree. Uh, we have been nurturing this tree since he almost destroyed it over 30 years ago. When we allowed him and his father access to cross the property, the road allowance will also be very close to a wild garlic patch located on one of our properties. Furthermore, there may be trees on the west side of Spring Creek Road on open road allowance that are endangered also. Has this been considered? Number six, to address the look of connectivity. Have you seen your photo, number three? Taken from the craft road looking west. Looks like connectivity to me. Could gates be installed to deter unneeded traffic? He will be updating this allowance as time goes by to meet his own needs with no regard to neighbors or rules and laws in effect. The township doesn't have the resources to keep this under control, and he will take advantage of this, as we know he already has. Number seven, if this road allowance is to be opened, we would like some input as to the constraints to be imposed to ensure the peaceful enjoyment of our properties and the said safety of sec and security of our land. We all know that when the crops are ready, the cash croppers work 24-7 to remove their crops. We are looking for a set timeline for accessing this allowance. Can the curfew of 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. be set that it's off limits to cross where houses are located? And when the four-wheelers and skidoo, skidoos find this access, should he be made responsible for posting quiet zones and installing gates at his cost, even if this happens at a later date? Number eight, as for property value, I have taken a photo of the supposed position of the unopened road allowance, see picture nine, and a photo of my front yard, see photo 10. Please compare those with your photo number four and convince me that my property value will not suffer from this eyesore. This is from my property. I cannot speculate on my neighbor's properties or view. Number nine, I would like to touch base with the regards to Mr. Hood's email, page 011, and the response from Sarah McDonald, page 012. In the first paragraph, and I quote, in this case, the authorization provided by council does not create a public right of way where one didn't previously exist, nor does it provide new rights to travel to the public, unquote. But at the beginning of that same paragraph, she says, and I quote, the public has a right to travel on open road allowance, unquote. Okay, so right away it always existed, but no one traveled it because there's trees there. Now, once the trees are removed and the road allowance is used for farm equipment, the public will have access and they will be traveling it to see where it goes. Hence, the new right to travel by the public in point one, Sarah points out that this is a service that residents would like. Then council is the body who would determine and authorize this, that increase. 
I say one resident would like, and you see here, many don't. In point two, I would like to reiterate that a proper survey needs to be done, not just two pigs here, an offense that may or no, may no longer still be there. So we know where our property lines are. Number 10, in Robbie's email, he mentions that he is having a hard time getting past the drainage issues to the north on the municipal drain. He has already installed culver culverts and removed trees. So we don't see there's an issue getting across that way as it sits now. Lucy Shaver also offered him access through her property, following her south end, then heading north to reach his property, and it was refused. She was a willing neighbor to give him access to the rear of his lot, labeled B, as per your photo 003. <clears throat> Excuse me. We understand that this is an agricultural community, and that is why we live here. Some of us are farmers, some of us have farmed in the past and are now retired from that field of work and want to enjoy the tranquility and have the opportunity of peaceful enjoyment of our property. In conclusion, we would like all of you to take a time to look this over and think about the impact that this is taking on the environment, oxygen, land erosion, lack of windbreaks, the wetlands and the disruption of local wife, life, wildlife, not to mention the disruption to all of us here today. Um, to conclude, um, when I got home from work today, there was a card in my door from Sean McDonald. Well, it says Sean here. Okay, Gary, the other side, sorry. Gary McDonald, Municipal Drain Superintendent. Um, he spoke to my husband, Terry. They're looking, um, Robbie Smith and Jerome McDonald have put in a request to dredge the Lapeer drain. Now, this is the one that he already has a culvert in and has drainage going into J.D. Hood's property. Now, if the township is going to dredge that drain where we will have to pay our part, most likely been there, done that before, um, put a culvert in. Let him go through his property like the rest of us go through our own properties. Leave the neighbors alone. Good fences make good neighbors. This is one person, two people who want access, and they're disrupting four families, minimum. I'm done. Thank you very much, Jocelyn, and thank you for the, the images. It's always good to have. We do have Sarah uh, available remotely, so she's, um, if, if you have questions of her, she is there. Um, just procedurally, um, at last meeting, we did authorize through resolution, I believe, the um, doing this, so we would need a motion to reconsider if we wanted to do the request just to council. And then from, we might want to discuss a policy point of view because in, in our policy presently it doesn't say that we have to um, discuss because it's a green road, it's township property, we don't have to discuss with the neighbors. That might be something that we could uh, have staff look at. Um, but for the moment, are there any questions of council or any op opinions around the table? Um, Deputy Mayor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Very well done. Thank you. Um, and as you were, we did pass this uh, last council meeting. I'm not ready to change my mind at the moment, but it does bring up something that I think we do need to have a, a better policy on our green roads, something that can be we can be a little more consistent because we do tend to, to deal with them on a one-on, you know, individual basis. Um, to address a couple of your points, um, Robbie could maybe come in from the north end, but it's a kilometer and a half to get to the bottom end. And uh, as a farmer, we do not want to drive through a field for a kilometer and a half hauling all the loads from the bottom end all the way to the north end. The shorter distance that we can to get on a roadway, the better for the soil, because it just compacts. We're, you know, a lot of the corn crops now are four or five tons for the acre, so it's, it's hundreds of tons that are coming out of some of these farms. And uh, so we're always looking for the easiest, shortest way, and it's the best for the, for the land to do that. 
Um, you did say good fences make good neighbors. And what it made me think is that when I see the picture, quite a bit of that road allowance now you guys are cutting as lawn. It, uh, you know, you could always put a fence up on that side and uh, it would uh, solve the problem of people getting onto your property. But I see where you're coming from. I have a road allowance that goes right through the middle of our farm, a green road, and it is open. There's people go by, sometimes more than one or two a day, four-wheelers, snowmobiles, horses. Sometimes I know who they are, sometimes I don't know who they are. I don't know where they're going, but they're out enjoying it. So I kind of say to myself, well, I don't own it. It's just the way it is. But it is also a great thing when neighbors come down. You know, my brother can get from his place to my place on that same road allowance. So it's not all terrible, but there are people that go by and we don't know what they're up to and they go right by our buildings, likely about the same distance as it would be to, from your house, be very close. Our house would likely be, you know, similar to that. And our bins and our shop and everything is kind of around at the back, so I don't know if somebody comes in from the back, I don't know what they're doing back there. So I understand where you're coming from, but these road lounges were put in, in my opinion, for access, for people to access their properties. So I'm kind of uh, still at that point, but I uh, appreciate the, you guys coming out. All right, Councillor McInnell and Councillor Bougie. Through you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for coming out and thank you for the presentation. It was a lot to follow and I, pre I appreciate the amount of work that would have gone into putting that package together for us. Um, I'm, I'm along the same lines as, uh, as the Deputy Mayor, as, as Martin is. Um, I understand where it, where it could be frustrating and I'm, I, there's only one thing I disagree with you in the entire presentation and it was Sarah's point was this was open to the public whether whether they were walking it or whether they were bushwhacking it because it's public owned land it's the township that owns it nobody pays property tax on it so it's the public's to use at their at their will and I agree they're there for access when we need them they're great treed it's great if we could leave them all in trees but when there's an access or somebody needs access to them that's what they're there for especially at little to no cost to, to the municipality um, but I understand where you're coming from. I'm not the same as Martin in that sense, but I got the peanut line that runs through the middle of my farm. I've got it where we've had issues in the past with people coming off. Every year we have issues with them going through the fields and they jump off and I don't mind. They come off and they go through up our laneway and into the bush and they we have trails they can use, I don't care. But when we've had issues in the back, people stealing things or whatever and coming up through the yard, but it's something you kind of learn to live with. And I know it's an adjustment at first, but um, at this point, I'll agree with the Deputy Mayor that I'm not really willing to change my mind, but I do appreciate you coming at this point. And, um, I mean, we can, we can keep an eye on it as it goes, but I think we should probably look at a policy going forward where we have something that's kind of a, a guideline to follow as opposed to these one-off requests and, and general <coughs> uses for them. But thank you for coming out and for your presentation. Through Mr. Mayor. Yes, thank you, Ms. LaPierre, for your presentation. There's a lot of uh, great visuals here, and uh, it was very well done. Um, my question was in regards to the altered municipal drain. You had mentioned that you uh, had a picture here with Mr. Smith that altered the municipal drain that was causing some flooding on Mr. Hood's property. Correct. And I guess on top of that, um, Mr. McDonald had visited uh, your husband uh, was there anything mentioned about the municipal drain or or was it just a card or I'm just curious as what uh, was said yeah Terry spoke to him on the phone so it's better if you hear it from him oh, yeah. than from me <laughs> yeah I was talking to him tonight and they're going to dredge the Summerstown Lapierre drain, or Lapierre drain mm -hmm. um, which means they're changing the culvert on Spring Creek Road and they're putting all new culverts in which give them full access to his property like he put in culverts this winter to get back there. Okay. But their problem right now is they it's beaver dams. Through anything east is dry. Uh, it's the beaver dams that are holding everything back. So once they put their culverts in, there won't be a problem. And get but, rid of the beaver dams. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Mayor McDonald. 
Thank you, Ms. LaPierre, for, for um, coming and for putting all the effort that you did into the presentation. And um, I guess a couple of things I wanted to say is that you did, um, you know, you did, we spoke a couple, I guess it's probably a week and a half ago or maybe longer, and you did bring forward some information that I was, I w I'm not gonna say that necessarily it would have changed my mind, but I, I am disappointed that I didn't know some of the information that you brought forward specifically about you know the location of your home close to the where it was in the unopened road allowance and and I like I told you I'd been under the impression that um, the neighbors were consulted or I should say aware um, as has been said by my colleagues you know that there's <coughs> that you know we hope that this um, the bylaw the unopened road and bylaw should probably need some updates. It's something we've been talking about for many years now at this, uh, certainly in my previous term of council, it was one of the things that came out of the uh, tree canopy policy. There's lots of feedback on that, that folks should be consulted uh, before these road allowances are altered. And I still strongly uh, believe that we should do that. And I think we talked about it so much that it was almost in my mind that it was being, happening. And that's part of, I think, the reason why I had misassumed that the neighbors were consulted. But I guess what I do want to say though in terms of consulting is, and this is what's uh, in terms of why I'm not, I'm not fully comfortable in also going back on our decision, is that when it comes to consultation, so much of the issues we've had with these road allowances is folks using them for their own personal benefit. And when I say personal benefit, I mean clearing them and starting to plant them and making money off of, the, off of them, or folks putting up no trespassing signs and stopping folks from being able to walk through or ride through because it is public property. So for me, the issue of consultation is very much about ensuring that those, line, those property lines are very clearly delineated so that there is an encroachment on your property or another person's property, but also that any alteration is, you know, has to be authorized also by the township. Uh, we need to, and, and I think when neighbors are aware of what's happening, they can keep everyone honest to make sure that there's not more alteration than what's been authorized. So I guess this is where my issue is in terms of coming back on the decision is that, yes, I agree, it sounds like uh, Mr. Smith will be benefiting from this road where he hasn't before, but also it still is a public, it is a public piece of property. And I think if we're preventing him, we're also giving, we're or perhaps uh, weighing it too much also to sort of the private enjoyment, I guess, of the, the folks who are already there. So I think uh, very much so, I think it was agreed in our resolution last time that you know our road manager is gonna be on top of ensuring that the road is well delineated and that they are not going to um, alter beyond what's been authorized. But I think, you know, like what you're asking for, certainly if the, if the decision isn't changed, is that, you know, that your concerns are taken seriously and that we ensure that Mr. Smith strictly adheres to the, what's been authorized. I think that is very, very, very important because, I mean, that's, um, that again is respecting the rights of all the town, of everyone in the township who all, you know, are, are uh, owners of that piece of property. So it's Councilor Bougie, I see your microphone's on, are you? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, so then just procedurally, um, it doesn't look like there would be support for motion to re. Does somebody want to bring up support support for? Because we all we voted in favor of it, so I, I think anybody can say to reconsider it. We've I've heard the points that probably not going to re reconsider on a different bounds. Did you have? Oh, sure, go ahead. I just want to um, reevaluate here a little bit, just to because we know as landowners that. Without pointing fingers, um, Mr. Smith has removed trees, which he does not have permission to remove trees. Therefore, I want to push the issue is how is this council going to be able to control with him having 200 feet access from Spring Creek Road and not pushing further than what he is allowed. If you look at the two pages that were extra that were given, that is a ground view from the property named McGilvery's. Therefore, that is um, part of lot seven. If you look at your original map, 
sorry, I have to dig here a little bit. The original map that was given in the agenda last month, um, I had po posted it as 003, okay? If you look between the red line and the yellow line, or the pink line and yellow line, that is McGilvery's property. And refer back to the other picture, those trees are gone. You guys did not give him access to that road allowance. He has already removed the trees. How much is he going to take from his neighbors? We, I understand he pays taxes. He is a farmer. I get it. We live in farmland. I was a farmer. We had beef cattle, not as big as Mr. Smith. But he's taken advantage. He got away with that. How much more is he going to get away with? You do not have the manpower to control this. I'm sorry, but you don't. We need you to speak for us. We need you to help us, to protect us. That's what you're here for. He is taking advantage, and you're letting him. All right, and yeah, based on last council, I see that uh, Ms. McDonald's hands up. So um, I'll go, if you don't mind, Deputy Mayor, to uh, Ms. McDonald first. Um, can you hear us? I believe if you were on your, do you have your previous um, presentation up? Because it's the uh, the area between the the pink red and the yellow running. I think that's east to west. If you want to talk to Sarah, you have to turn your mic on. She can't hear you otherwise. It's it's the farm property west. east of A, Sarah, on your original presentation. There's a, prop a property with a A circle. Uh, the one right of that is east. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Yes, I, I, w I would add to that that I, in talking to Mr. Smith, he had said that he had been given permission previously to clear trees on that road allowance. Now, this time, staff decided to bring it to council to make sure that we were all right with it, and I think that's fine. As far as I can see so far, Mr. Smith has been, there's lots of guys that have gone out there, cleared road allowances, tiled them, and are farming them and not said a word. So I'm happy that he has come forward He's going through the right channels to do this. As far as us uh, policing him and making sure that he does the right thing, I guess you're right, that's our job. We'll try to make sure, and I'm sure that if you feel we're not mate, doing a good job, you'll let us know. But I just want you to keep in mind, there's 500 and some almost 600 feet of that road allowance that's cleared that is your lawn. You know, I don't know who cleared it, I'm not accusing you of clearing it, but I was there today and you're, you're cutting it as lawn. So just, you know. May I add to that? Okay. Years ago, when we bought that property, uh, 1994, to be honest, um, there was a fence there with a gate. It was, that whole area was being used as pasture. 
we were told, according to our deed, the most southerly surveyor's pay is the corner of our property. So the most southerly corner where we found the pig was at the fence. Therefore, we knew there was a road allowance there, but since the, we found the surveyor's pig, we assumed, our fault I guess, that it was on the south side, therefore in Winters, correct? Property. Greens. So, to us, it was our property. Now, we gave Mr. Smith access. Under the stipulations, word of mouth, neighborly favor. You can go through, fix the fence, fix the gates. Fix any ruts that you make going through there. And we'd like a load of wood. Fair enough, no problem, all is good. He goes through, does what he wants to do, cuts trees, da 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 da. Now, he's out of there, he's done. Okay, we have ruts, fix them, nope. We have broken fence, broken gates, fix them, nope. But here's your load of wood. Hence, why now it is, we went through with a bulldozer, leveled off all the ruts so my grandchildren will not break an ankle going through there. It was seeded and we cut it, yes. We found out in 2014 when we built our home there we needed a building permit. We had a septic system installed with the permit. The well was installed. The house was a prefab house sitting on a trailer, in th on three trailers, waiting to come in. We were waiting for a building permit from the township. It went through, everything was okay. We got our building permit, but we couldn't put our driveway where we wanted to, because that's where the road allowance is. That's when we found out the road allowance was on the north side of that pin. Now, is it or isn't it? Get it surveyed and then we'll all know. All right, I don't, I, I, I was yeah, more I to your question. Thank you for the clarification. And I think there's been a lot of that over the years, people not knowing exactly where the road allowance is. And I'm not wanting to go back in the past and say somebody did something wrong, somebody did something right, and it could be Part of the, the fields that are cleared to the east, like I'm just looking at a map of it right now that shows the road allowance. And, and part of that may have been cleared with people not even knowing it was there. You never know. But we have to move forward from this day forward. But I, all I'm saying is don't be too hard on Mr. Smith as far as going through it like, and wanting him to, because if we hold you to the same account, you know, then are we going to want you to put a fence up there? Are we going to say that you can't alter the, you know, the part that you're using there right now? I just, you know, I think if people talk, work things out, it should be able to be worked out. The other thing with this survey, <clears throat> I think it seems pretty clear to us, and, and looking at the map, that that fence that is there is the southernmost portion of the road allowance. We know they're about 40 feet wide, so it should be fairly plain. But I would think that if you, if you think there needs to be a survey, then maybe you and Mr. Smith split the cost on it. And, uh, well, you want the road allowance too, I mean, well, I don't want to argue with you. I think that can be worked out, but uh, I think you just need to, to chat and everybody should learn you know, to get along. There is a road allowance there. It's owned by the township, and I think it serves a purpose for people to access their properties, as well as you. I mean, you have access to it as well. So. I think if I, oh, Councillor Jaworski. Um, through Mayor McDonald, I do think the issue of you know having the properties clearly delineate, delineated on who owns what, and I, if I recall in the resolution, I don't think that was I don't think administration was um, forced to go one way or another in terms of whether or not it has to be a visual or not. And my understanding, it is the applicant who, in this case, Mr. Smith, who would have to pay for the survey if there was a question on where the line was. I th at least that was my understanding from the last meeting. Ms. McDonald, did you hear that question? Does the applicant, uh, Mr. Smith, would he have to pay for the, um, the survey? Should he proceed with the, as, as the resolution read?
Okay, thank you. Councilor McNamell. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I was under the impression we had said that, that, that it be delineated with the roads manager. They make that decision. They said if they can find a pin, it should be pretty common sense from there. Get a tape measure and flag it. It's 40 feet wide, you got one pin. You need one. They're, they're on a straight line. They were. No, they don't mean anything, but at this point, we kind of, they, they do bear some kind of a presence. And we have the survey maps, which we have, well, we could probably put it up on the screen. It's a straight line. That's how that road allowance was, and you've got one pin. Yes, but may so I you add to measure that? It off. My, my father-in-law uh, did some of the survey on that roadway years ago. He's passed now, but... Um, according to the survey way back when, um, this road allowance jogs between every property and a half. I think we're splitting hairs at this point. As if there's no, uh, like it's n of no, offen no offense to you guys. We've got, we've got to either make a decision to go move on or and if you that, look at and leave your it to administration's decision, I think at this point, whether there needs to be a survey or not. And if yeah. you look at your bylaw 33-14, Number two, surveys may be required to confirm that the proposed use with no encroachment on adjacent privately owned lands. Your paperwork. Our bylaw okay. states may. It, Let's keep this. Well, anyways. No, it, it, it is fair. I, I think um, what you're drawing to is we did live it with the roads manager under their best discretion if they can find that pin. Uh, we don't want to encroach or have Mr. Smith encroach on your property as much as you don't want him to because it is our, our green road. Um, procedurally, again, the motion to reconsider, I, I don't think it looks like we're taking that motion, so Mr. Smith will be able to do that, um, to proceed. And as per our last direction to Ms. McDonald, uh, we had mentioned please have the roads manager um, be very wary of, the, uh, not wary, but like um, focus on this one. And then I just want a further question to council, because uh, that was part of the request, um, was to, to, well, I don't know if it's part of the question, but it's part of the conversation is, do we want this policy to come back through uh, uh, Ms. McDonald uh, to look at perhaps adding that, um, the discussion with neighbors, much like in the uh, site plan controls where we, uh, we, we circulate notice to neighbors within an X amount of time so this doesn't uh, surprise people? Okay, Ms. McDonald, do you have that direction to uh, to look that over in the in the near to mid future to to uh, bring it back to council? Yeah, if I may, Mr. Mayor, and through you, is it still? Okay, as long as we're working on it. And did, did you have something, Deputy Mayor, or are you just changing your phone? I was trying, I was having a hard time hearing Ms. McDonald. I had to turn up my, my microphone there. I will say something, though, now that you've given me the floor and through you, and it's just about the old fence lines. They are very, very important to the surveyors. I've worked with a surveyor to survey quite a few properties, and in times when I, we weren't sure, and he said the fence lines are important to them. They use the fence lines, especially the old fence lines, because that was considered the property line for enough years that it's it's now the property line. So I'll just reiterate, as far as the survey is concerned, if 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 our staff, if, us, if the township is happy that we know where it is, and Mr. Smith is happy that he knows where it is, and if you're the only one that disputes where it is, I don't see why we would make Mr. Smith pay for a survey. Just make sure if it is if it is topical because we we do have like normally we, we allocate ten minutes for presentation and, and somewhat after but if you if you just make a brief comment uh, we may um, we might just move on just because there appears to be no interest in reconsideration. Mm -hmm. Keep it short is what he's saying. Yeah, no sweat. Um, you guys are going to be reviewing all this stuff. Make a note, courtesy if nothing else. Ask the neighbors. 
And what you're talking about, the fence and uh, the thing, I had a 100 acre property in Vancouver Hill. I had it surveyed to cut out 20 acres. Turns out that my property was 15 feet on that side of the stone fence. Not that I was going to grow anything, but that's mine. I'm paying taxes on it. Where we are now, the whole 200 feet or whatever is back of my property. There's already people trespassing, or there have been in the past, because there's a lot of garlic, stuff like that. No, we moved there to have peace and quiet. Like, we're not trying to, for you people to do, like, you're on your back foot right now. And I understand what you're saying, Mr. Lang, because you're a farmer. This guy does have access all the way to the back now. And he did put a, cu well, a culvert, it's a pipe, actually, mm -hmm. that drains onto my property, and so on and so forth. Um, I saw Mr. McDonald today. He came over with Jerome, and he talked about cleaning out the drain and stuff. I'm great, because I'm not going to be as flooded as I am now. But um, when, and I see what you're saying, not getting on the roadway and so on and so forth, easier for, for him to put stuff in and out and whatever. So what? The stuff was like that when we bought the place. The stuff was like that when he bought some of them properties and stuff. I understand it'd be maybe a little bit easier for him, but it's not like it's a big, tough, like, five-mile detour right now. And if that's going to uh, encroach on our enjoying our property, um, no more deer, no more, you know. You're going to look at everything. And I, I'm not saying that you didn't, but I'm pretty sure that you probably didn't look at our side of the thing. And, and I was told that, um, Robbie had said that he consulted his neighbors. Well, whatever neighbor you asked, they all said no. Since we're here, it shows that we were not consulted. Yeah, so, but anyways, it, it is what it is. And if you're going to make some changes, make some changes that's going to consider the people that are paying the bloody taxes that are there for peace and quiet. And, you know, like, he doesn't only farm, as you know. He does construction work as well, drainage and so on and so forth. And anyways, uh, I, I don't want to keep Robbie from earning a living. That's not the point. But I want my peace and quiet. And I don't want no trespassers on my property. So if you make a road that goes right like that, and Spring Creek over here, and all my garlic over there, and on and on and on, you're going to have one pissed guy real quick. If that you know opens up all that. There's going to be no fence. This is going to be open, right? And as it is now, just because we have signs from one end to the other, no trespassing, red thing, this thing, that thing, there's still people that come on. Every spring we see mattresses on Spring Creek Road and stuff. You know, Needles. just because you're a nice guy, you're a nice guy, I'm a nice guy, there's some yin-yangs out there that just don't respect anybody's property. You and open it up and it's going to make it worse. Yeah, I'm not saying that would be Robbie doing that, but it just makes it more access for more people. Yeah, and it is tough to govern human behavior, right? So that's something that, regardless of what we can do, we can't do that. I'll just leave, Councillor McNeil has one last comment, and we'll move on to Mr. Bronsley. No, and I, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, sim I sympathize with you as well on that. I, I know Martin can agree. We've both got properties. I spent all of, uh, what was it, Easter weekend last year cleaning a green road I was sick and tired of hearing about and, and picking stuff out of the field. Mattresses, you name it, half a car, it doesn't matter doesn't matter where it is, people are going to throw trash. And unfortunately, that seems to be our rural municipalities. You don't drive down 2nd Street in Cornwall and somebody's throwing a mattress into the parking lot at the Times Square. That's just not how this works. But, you know, that's just not where people dump it. Unfortunately, they find quiet roads and that's where they dump it. But it's, I think that there's a bit of a fact of living out in the country and that's we get to enjoy the peace and quiet 90% of the time. But sometimes we, we put up with a little bit of crap for it. So I sympathize with you on that. I take it as a win you've had it this quiet for so long too. I mean, we've got roads that people have cleaned and they just go down and they make a mess of them, but that's, it's a fact of living. They're maintaining it, it's clean. If you leave it the way it is, it looks like what he's wanting to create. So you can't blame them for making them, you know, enjoying no. the property clean. Uh, and we hope that, uh, and uh, Ms. McDonald, uh, as the person who, um, I guess, pr follows the policy that we, we put forth, has heard your comments. So uh, in that regard, uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I <laughs> I'm not trying to just shoo-shoo you, yeah. but I, I appreciate it. And I'm always glad to hear um, 
the counter opinion to the one we may have heard before. So thank you very much for your representation this evening. The next presentation is for Township Greater Renter Rentals, Mr. Ronsley. Uh, same procedure, you come up and the gray button turns it on, red light means it's on. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is David Ronsley. I think I know some of you, not all of you. But uh, if you had anything to do with soccer, you probably came up against me at some point or other. Generally, I was a referee. Um, I, uh, I've lived in South Glengarry for nearly 30 years now. Uh, enjoyed every minute of it. It's a little gem. And uh, I, uh, I congratulate you all on getting elected and being uh, representatives here. And you know, it's my first chance to do that. So very well done. I know it takes a lot for everybody to give up their time to do what you do. So uh, I always sort of tout the township and when I got a new neighbour this last year uh, who came and by the time he got, got to us and we'd had the moving out and the moving in next door, we share a driveway that goes up to uh, Loyalist Road. Uh, it's a 100 metre driveway from where the old, very old, um, Montreal Road used to be and where Loyalist Road is now. Uh, and uh, so all of that traffic on there made it bad. And I said, don't worry, the counts, township's got a really good plan. You know, you can go along and you can rent, you can rent a grader for an hour and they'll come along and do the whole job for you. And it cost you, it'll cost us $100 to get it done. Uh, and uh, so I was a little disappointed when I got to the township office to organize this because I remembered the forms you had to fill in. I've done this any number of times over the 30 years I've lived there. Uh, and uh, it's always gone well. It's always been a very, it hasn't always been quick. Sometimes you have to wait because it's not convenient for the township to do it when you ask. Uh, so I think one year I waited a year, but generally they get around to doing it and they take advantage of quiet times to do it when they've got nothing else for their equipment to do. Anyway, so I, I wrote a little note to the mayor and uh, asked him about it. Uh, and uh, he came back and told me that in fact you've been trying to stop doing it since the mid, since 2016, 2017, that sort of era, era. Uh, and that uh, in 2021 uh, it was $75 an hour, which was the last time I took advantage of it. Uh, and in uh, 22 you put the price up to $225, and in 23 you got rid of it altogether. So I, I kind of. I got the idea that, you know, a lot of people think when they get something extra like that, it's really a, an expensive add-on. Uh, and uh, as, a, as a business consultant, you know, I was a, that's what I did for a living for many years, uh, uh, ended up uh, doing it internationally. Uh, I, my job's always been to look and see what opportunities are there. And uh, often those opportunities are hidden in the costs. And, and the cost in this situation, I kind of figured that when you're charging $75, that was direct labor and perhaps some benefits uh, for the employee, uh, and probably little for the piece of equipment. Uh, and uh, I guess that when you decided to put it to $225, which is three times the amount, that basically that, that was a fully loaded cost where you loaded all the costs of everything that you could for maintenance, depreciation, all of those kind of things in a sort of standard cost approach to how you would figure out what the cost of an hour of, uh, of a piece of machinery is. Uh, and that seemed like seems a very standard way for people to do it. What it doesn't take into consideration, however, is that when you've got those pieces of equipment and they're there to manage the roads and they're doing all the work that they're doing, the small amount of extra work that we're talking about for these paid for, you know, opportunities for citizens to come and take advantage of the fact that we own all this equipment, uh, that extra burden is in fact not very great from a cost perspective. Uh, and what you have to do is you kind of have to turn things around and look at it from what they call an avoidable cost base, right? You can, you can, you can, we can obviously see what we would be avoiding in terms of revenue 
because we would no longer get the revenue from these hours of operations that are outside the tax code, right? Uh, and then you've got to look at, well, what do we save, right? If we get rid of this and we don't do it anymore, just exactly what do we save? And I think when you take a very close look at this, you can say, well, the first thing you might say is, okay, well, we're going to save the, the cost of the employee for an hour. Well, I would question whether that's probably true, right? Because, in fact, it's typically being done in a quiet moment when you haven't got other work to do. So you probably would plan that employee anyway to be there. And if you weren't, he was a contract guy. Uh, potentially you weren't, you weren't, but I sense that you might be paying the guy anyway. So that really, you can't say you save that cost. Uh, so then you can say, okay, well, we must have saved some maintenance costs. Well, yeah, you still got the maintenance department, you still got this piece of equipment, the equipment that's going to the maintenance department and being taken care of just exactly the same way it was kind of taken care of before. And so there really, you aren't making any saving there. It's really, the only thing you could say is, well, if we, if we weren't using the piece of equipment, we wouldn't use diesel or whatever it runs on, and we might save some oil here or something. But you'll find that the fact, the actual avoidable cost, if you get down to the nitty gritty, is, is not very much at all. So you are taking away on the one side revenue which is going against our taxes, and you are not making any saving on the other side. So the, that potentially is you're actually increasing our costs, in, our, our tax base by a small amount without, without necessarily realizing that you're doing it. You know, whereas what you had was a service to your, your, your citizens, which I found to be very useful, I'm sure other people did at some time, uh, that takes advantage of the fact that we've paid our taxes and we've paid for all this equipment to be there. We, I mean, we're not, you're not saving any depreciation on this by not having it do this work. You're not saving any of those things by, by stopping doing this activity. So all you're doing is giving away that amount of income. And I would, I would ask you to reconsider that, right? Because that's... Uh, um, why, why not take advantage of the fact that we, as a collective, own this equipment and let everybody, you know, if they do have a requirement to use it, take advantage of that. I don't think we're interfering with anybody else. So I would just, I'm here to ask you to sort of reevaluate that and rethink it in terms of what I would call a, a more appropriate cost model, which is avoidable costs. If you look and see what you can avoid, then you, I think you'll find that you won't be avoiding very much by the fact you've got rid of this. Thank you, Mr. Ronsley. I, I do think that you also said in your presentation that uh, sometimes it's a year later and you seem to be patient for that, so you understand that sometimes like, it, it hits whenever it hits and we, we can slide it in. But Councillor McInnell had Absolutely, it did. And, and, and I, we, when I was explained to me the first time I ever did it, they said, look, we can't guarantee to do this at any particular time. And I said, that's perfectly fine. The holes aren't going anywhere. Councillor McDonnell and then Deputy Mayor Lang. Through you, Mr. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for coming and bringing this to our attention. I'll be honest, I didn't realize we had quit doing it myself. I know we had upped it just because they're a million dollar greater and the guys are making, you know, they're making a decent salary now. And as much as, yeah, we probably would be paying them that hour. They could probably be washing that machine for an hour, so it's, I call it a lost hour whether they're doing it anyways. We should be compensated for it. And we try not to do it too much because if something breaks at somebody's place, then it's a real pain because you're running back out to finish it. When if it's on the road, we call out the service truck and they try and fix it where it is and we got the space to get out of the way. Um, so it's to me, it's avoidable work, but it's a service I think we should continue to provide at a, at a cost that's not unreasonable. I mean, you're talking, that's probably under the going rate for a greater anyways these days. But nonetheless, I, I would like to see us, uh, I guess just myself, kind of like to see us offer that service still at the, I guess we'll say the less uh, desirable rate. I, th I think there's a rate that's, I, I thought, I've always thought 75 was too low. 
and really you, 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 you're deciding what you're going to charge. 225 is probably a bit on the rich side, so you're probably somewhere in the middle of that lot. I mean, you did put it up 200% over, you know, that was a bit of a, was a, bit of a jump, right? So, uh, you know. No, absolutely. But that's kind of where I stand right now. That's this is excellent because it was a, it's a level of service conversation, right? So it's very much in council's purview. So I thank you for bringing this forward, Deputy Mayor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. And uh, the 75, you, as you said, is likely on the low side. I think we started low and then we didn't raise it for right. ever. So you didn't ever. It was always 75. Oh no, I remember I used the service myself one time to uh, to get a, a a lane done that right. needed to be done. Anyway. I, I agree with Mr. McDonnell that uh, I didn't realize we had totally stopped. I remember having the conversation that 75 was low, and I think council agreed at the time. We can't do it to benefit a few residents, because it doesn't benefit the majority of our residents. It's only a few. Mostly the ones that live on private roads. But it was a service that they appreciated, and I thought, well, maybe we keep that service going, but at a rate that mm -hmm. seemed a little more reali realistic. One point I will say that uh, to your to your fact that we're we're doing it when they, they're not as busy and, and whether we're actually you know the staff time is is worth that we in this day and age we I think we have to get back to we're doing more of our own because we're hiring outside firms to put in culverts I'll use this as an example and we're paying absorbent rates like crazy amounts of money to put in culverts and if we have some that our staff can be doing it's we need them you know maybe there's times where we weren't doing our own culverts that they could be taking and using that time so I think staff time is a very valuable thing and it's getting more valuable all the time because the more we can do, the less we have to get outside firms, to, and they charge us a lot. So, but I, I'm not totally against us still for continuing to provide that service, but at a rate that is is reasonable. Yes, and it's I, not that hard to check. There are other companies, Cornwall Gravel and so forth, that do this sort of thing. We can ask them what they charge. They're going to be charging something where they make a buck, and maybe you know we just need to be a little bit under that. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Councillor Bougie, then Councillor Jaworski. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. I uh, I was also unaware that. Uh, we stopped offering this service, as uh, Councillor McDonnell had mentioned. I'm wondering, uh, maybe Ms. McDonnell can explain why possibly the service was uh, removed, and um, if we are to bring it back, which I'm not against, I, as long as we're covering our costs uh, for this, because time is important and we only have a certain uh, amount of workforce, so mm -hmm. uh, as long as we're recovering our costs and it's possible. Uh, I'm in favor of it, but I'd just like to hear the answer from Ms. McDonald as to maybe why it was removed. That would be great. Ms. McDonald, could you um, take a moment to answer Mr. Bushy or Council Bushy? Councillor Jaworski. Thank you, through uh, Mayor McDonald. Uh, I, I was, I did not realize we had stopped it from the discussion we had um, some time ago at the council table. I definitely understood that we wanted to increase the rate because um, much to what's been said already is 
uh, you know, our, our operator time is very valuable. And I, I, if I recall correctly also, it was actually taking, it wasn't so much that they weren't, they don't have downtime to, to necessarily do this kind of work. It was actually taking them away from doing work that was more uh, of benefit to the entire township versus this sort of, you know, um, task that was, uh, you know, very much very specific to very specific um, benefits of private road um, owners. So I would like us to see, to continue it. However, um, I don't want us to be doing it at much of a loss, if any loss. I think we need to be, I don't say necessarily competitive with other um, operators, but I think really it comes down to the time of our operators. I, I think um, it's if it's something that can be squeezed in here and there, that's great, but I think unfortunately, I know for those who, who are relying, who like this service, I really think it needs to be put quite low on the, the priority list in terms of things that could be done, and I think the cost, 100%, it has to cover what it costs us to do, because again, we just don't have the manpower to be able to divert um, staff to do this, at the, you know, the, the way things are going today. Maybe, you know, sometime, like 10 years, whenever this was started, probably things were quite different in terms of staff time, so <laughs> thank you. So it seems then the direction would be to to, to bring this service back, uh, Ms. McDonald, but if I can borrow Councillor Jaworski's words, um, it's, it's not the priority item, so it's kind of when it can be fitted in, and I, I think Mr. Ronsley uh, had said that, and I guess we have to be very clear that it's not uh, it's not an immediate basis, it's, it's when we can. Uh, Ms. McDonald, does this sound like something we can, we can do uh, in that method, where it is kind of maybe a Friday afternoon whenever they're off at halftime, or at, off near noon? and then it's overtime sometime late in the summer? Like, it, would there be uh, manpower or HR restrictions, or are you able to, to do this? That's not, that sounds reasonable for me. Deputy Mayor Lang has a question, uh, question or comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. I wonder if, uh, if we could, uh, because there's going to be times, and like you said, Mr. Ronsley, there's one time you had to wait a year. If, if we could at the, at the office have a list of uh, private contractors that do this service with amounts and phone numbers for people, if somebody comes in, you know, we could give them the list because if, if our rates are going to be similar and if uh, you know if they'd like to get this job done, maybe we could just make it a little easier for them. It would be hard for us to get that information and have it to, to give to people. Actually, I, I do believe that that yes. information is is available. I did contact uh, Ms. McDonald. And I, I believe I passed that information on to you, or she, or she did. So, yeah. but, yes, but yes, I got a couple of references. Yeah. Um, so I, then, I, I would think uh, if you're thinking of putting a price of it up somewhere around, somewhere around two hundred dollars, you wouldn't have any, you know, an hour. I doubt that anybody would push back, you know, if they would want to use it. Uh, I'd certainly take advantage of it. Um, we've got hundred meters of roadway. It's, uh, it's, it's a, it's, we don't own it. It's a free, it's a uh, access way. Uh, so, uh, but it's, uh, uh, we look after it because it's obviously takes takes us to our house, uh, and, uh, but it's, uh, uh, I'm sure that, I'm sure that uh, getting the township operator to do it, and they always do a decent job, you know, they, they never promise us the world, right, they never say they're going to get rid of every hole that we've got in there, right, but uh, they do a pretty decent job, and uh, uh, they, uh, uh, if we have to bring in, if we have to bring in a contractor, I'm sure we're looking at two or three times the price. Okay, thank you. Then through uh, to Ms. McDonald, um, if you could get that on paper, I guess is what she, she's looking for us to, to say what we want to make sure we're clear about it, and uh, we'll see it at a future staff meeting. Thank and you. It's, it seems like uh, there's interest around the table to uh, bring that level of service back. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So with that, we will move into action requests, and thank you again for your time. 2023 Pride Month, uh, 
Ms. Campo, um, just read the resolution first. Moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Stephanie Jaworski, be it resolved that Staff Report 76 2023 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Langary hereby recognizes June 2023 as Pride Month throughout the Township of South Langary and acknowledges, supports, celebrates, or sorry, and celebrates equality, inclusion, and the empowerment of all members of the LGBTQ plus community. And furthermore, that the Pride flag be raised at the Municipal Office in Lancaster and Charlene Rec Center for the month of June. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Uh, council will recall over the last uh, couple of years, Council has recognized June as Pride Month in the Township of South Glengarry, and we have raised the Pride flag at the municipal office. Um, as we don't have a flag raising policy presently, um, we do bring this as a report to Council for approval prior to um, raising the flag at the Township office. So uh, subject to any questions of council, um, I don't have any additional information uh, from what's in the report. All right, would, would we want a flag raising policy? I know that uh, there, um, as I was talking to administration and there are more um, requests for special interest groups to, to raise flags coming through. Um, so I don't know if you want to speak to that. Sorry, if I could just comment comment on that through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are actually doing some preliminary policy research on bringing such a policy forward. As you, you mentioned, we are getting an increasing number of requests to fly special flags or uh, flags for events and various groups in the community. So um, without having any real parameters for that, um, we have started drafting a policy. Um, until such time as that comes forward, though, we will bring these requests forward to Council through a, a report. Are there any questions or comments of Council for this resolution is read? Stephanie, uh, Councilor Jaworski. Thank you, through Mayor McDonald. No, I'm, I'm, I was very happy to see this come forward. Um, for whatever reason, some of these issues have become more contentious and folks in you know, the LGBTQ community seem to be uh, under or the focus of more um, hate, I guess, is the best way to put it. So I'm glad to see that the township is doing this like we've done in the past. And um, if it makes, even if it just makes one member of our community feel more, more safe or more included, I think it's definitely worth it. And moving forward in terms of um, like a policy, I mean, if we think, if staff thinks we need one, I just, I mean, I, sometimes we don't need to make, you know, big procedures for for things, but again, I'm not on the receiving end, so I'm not familiar with how many requests there are. I, I don't get involved in very many of them, to be true. I think two is what we've kind of done, so that doesn't seem like a lot from my end, but like I said, I'm not on the administration side. Thanks. Okay, so I, I've read the resolution. All those in favor as read? Any of opposed? Seeing none, carried. Moving to action request 7C, request for alteration of Green Road. Um, moved by Martin Lang, seconded by Stephanie Jagorski. Be it resolved that staff report 77, 2023 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Langary direct administration to select one. Proceed with, proceed with option A, uh, a request for quotation for the roof system. Oh, so that's, sorry, that was the, uh, the resolution for the item that was removed. So moved by Sam Actonell, seconded by Martin Lang, be it resolved that Staff Report 78, 2023 be received at the Council of the Township of South Langary with respect to the request to alter the unopened road allowance identified as pin 67137-0088, east from Fifth Line Road. Select one, option A, intends to assume the unopened road allowance as a public road once it has been constru constructed by the applicant to the municipal standards and furthermore directs the general manager of infrastructure services to enter into agreement for this alteration and authorizes the general manager of infrastructure services to review and approve all reports, design and construction required for the approved alteration. Option B does not intend to assume this unopened road allowance as public road and directs administration to not authorize the alteration as requested. Option C requests additional information from the applicant. Ms. McDonald.
Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor McDonnell. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess my question is, are they looking to, are they proposing to like subdivide the subject property or are they just proposing the, per the building of a single detached home? And if I may, this is to... Uh, I, I would just, well, yeah, to Ms. McDonald, if, if she's aware, if not, I, I, our planner isn't here tonight, but... Uh, yes, and if I may, just on top of Councillor McDonnell's uh, comment, uh, I did visit the, the mayor of uh, Riviera Bidette uh, sometime in March, and I know that their growth is coming that way, and I, had, I don't know if um, our former CEO had, had made the time I'd asked for a staff report to come back. Um, I think Riviera Bidette would like to have their road come all the way to that road at some point. So like, I'm curious as to the ramifications of that from a planning standpoint. Again, as you kind of said, our, our planner is not here this evening uh, because if, if that road is used to bypass um, Riviera Bidette uh, and a lot of road traffic would be coming up Fifth Line Road and then to that tangent, if that road was built and, and uh, met the Quebec Road, it'd be, be an increase of uh, truck traffic onto that uh, road so that, uh, uh, yeah so that was my my next question was that leads straight to river but that's business park so i don't necessarily think we want to that's not a road that's going to bear that traffic anyways and i don't know that we that road allowance has the space to even be built out wide enough to take that much i'm sure it's 40 feet and so i guess there to me there was just i don't know maybe a few bit of missing information before i was real comfortable making that decision whether it was to move forward just based on that. Debbie Mayor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. The, land, the parcel that the property that this uh, applicant owns is completely landlocked. There's no access to it from any road. So if he's willing to pay the whole shot to get access to it, I'm okay with it. I do think I wouldn't worry too much about whether the road comes from River Bidette because I don't think that they can join to one of our roads without our permission. I think, you know, if, we, if even if we just wanted to leave one foot right at the border that was not road, same as we do in the subdivisions, and if we decide, you know, we'd have to have an agreement with them before we would ever agree, agree to that, you know, so I, I'm not worried about that part of it. And it's quite a ways from there at this point. Um, the business park, I didn't measure it, but it looks like it's quite a ways. So, I mean, if the guy wants to pay, to get access to his piece of property that he owns and he puts it up to our standards, I'm perfectly fine with it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor McDonnell, uh, McDonald, sorry. Through you, Mr. Mayor. No, I'm fine. I'm fine with them using it for access. My comment is, are we going to then maintain this road? We're going to build it. We're going to have it built up and, or are we just going to leave it as use? Because that's, we're assuming at this point, the request, I think option A is that we assume all future, once it's done, you're, that's the way you're leaning at this point? And to confirm, Ms. McDonald, you had said that that administratively was possible uh, through your roads discussions? No, that was it that had, uh, Roads Administration thought that uh, it was possible to maintain. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't inhibit. Yeah, yes, and just to follow up, I, I believe Councillor Mac McDonnell, oh my, <laughs> sorry, Councillor McDonnell uh, was asking is, um, like, if we maintain it, can, like, it doesn't burden the rest of the road, like, it's fairly easy to do it. Did I understand that question properly? I uh, guess my question through you, Mr. Mayor, is are we going to have to, is, is taking it on as a public road, are we going to have to do any expropriation? If, is this only 40 feet? What do we have here? Like, is, is our standard that we're going to open a new public road, we have to own 60 feet? 
and then we're going to have to start expropriating from adjacent landowners, which is not this landowner. So that's kind of where my concerns were a little bit. Are we going to have one section of 60 feet as opposed to what the rest of that road, I'm sure, is 50 or kind of that? That was just, is there, is there future issues we're looking at just by saying, yes, we'll assume this road? Okay, I, I guess my concern is I don't want to give this applic the applicant uh, a false narrative going in that, okay, we're fine with this, and then there's five or six different things that come down, like I say, like expropriation, or what are the requirements going to be? Is there going to be a, a, you know, I don't want them to, I basically don't want them to spend consulting fees for us to say no in two months because we get, uh, we get some new information or we find out we've got to expropriate or whatever the case may be. So it was just, that's kind of where my concern is. I don't want to put false you know, issues there. I have no issue with them opening the road allowance and using it now as an unopened road allowance, but I just don't want to commit to taking it when we haven't got all the information or what the even the intent use is. Uh, Councilor Jaworski. Thank you. Through you, Mayor McDonald. Uh, so a couple of things. I, the uh, comment from, I think, yourself, Mayor and Councillor McDonnell about, you know, could this potentially be causing, you know, like could this connect at some point with a road from Riviere Baudet? Uh, that, um, and that was an interesting one I had not thought of, so I, I appreciate, I want to thank folks for that comment because I do think it's something to think about. But I suppose if that is a concern, which it's probably something like in terms of long-term planning we should really be thinking about. Uh, I would suggest then that the um, the road allowance that we open that re that we wouldn't open it all across the property, that we would open it to you know the the entrance of the property as opposed to making it a road all the way to the end of nowhere I guess to the border I guess just put it to the beginning of their property and then it's up to them once they start putting things inside their own property. That, um, I, I mean, I don't think it's right for us to not allow them to have access to this piece because uh, it is landlocked. So I think, I think sort of like what Councillor McDonnell was saying, at a minimum, we need to allow them to have access to this unopened road allowance to be able to access their landlocked property. And I guess in terms of assuming it as a roadway, I think we need a bit more information, maybe like a, maybe a land use planning sort of input to see, you know, what should we be doing at the end of it or, um, yeah, maybe just get some of the other pieces of information that have been mentioned already this evening. Thank you. Okay, so is there a, a leaning towards, uh, I think I've heard, um, certainly not B, but a little bit of A and a little bit of C, which is um, request additional information from the applicant or intends, and that doesn't say we shall, I think it's just the intention to, so information can change to assume the unopened road allowance as a public one once it has been constructed by the applicant to the, to the standard and furthermore direct us to enter into an agreement to allow this. So, um, I don't know. Or I just, I don't think we should commit to taking it on full time and give this, the, I, I think we asked for more information and whether if we want to put in there that it, it seems like he's going to have to do a bit of work, he, or this group will have to do a bit of work to get there maybe but you know kind of allow them well maybe not it looks pretty clear and open for them to get to their property depending where that property line is with the uh, the morrison farm but I, I if they need if they need permission to use the unopened road allowance and cut any trees i'd say we give it to them if they i, I just think we need more information before we go too far and give them false false uh full support. Okay. So option C, uh, Deputy Mayor Lang. Thank you, Mr. And through you, just a question on what Mr. Manekton now is saying. If we let them use the unopened road allowance, it's one thing to use it as an access to your property. Do we allow, do we give them a building permit then if they would like to build? And then do we allow them to improve that unopened road allowance so that it's year round with gravel or, or this sort of thing? Like we have to decide where that goes, you know, like 
it's one thing to allow access to be able to drive down with farm machinery. Another thing, if you need access year round, you know, to be able to get in and, uh, and then I'm not sure what the ramifications are then for, uh, you know, fire and ambulance. Do they use that uh, on open road allowance then as access to get to that property if they do build on it? So it seems like you would have a few more questions, which is requiring additional information. So that would be, I believe, C from the two of you, uh, uh, Councillor Jaworski. I think that's where my question comes from. Do we want to take it on full time right now and commit to maintaining that road to full spec at all times and running a snowplow down it? Or are we willing to say you've got access like a private laneway or I, I'm assuming this is probably, we don't even know the zoning. Is this zoned ag? Is this what, uh, you know, like I don't know if they could even build on it. They might not be able to. They might be able to build a home on it if they're just building one. but. I mean, it's a small, narrow parcel. It's kind of a little additional information would be great. I have no issue giving them help, but I mean, are we going to take on a road for that that length of distance and maintain it to OSIMS and, uh, and all those standards when it probably could just be a gravel laneway for very little cost? Okay, Councilor Jaworski, you had a question or comment perhaps? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's sort of in response to Deputy Mayor Lang's, like, I'm not saying it's an unopened road allowance forever or, or whatnot, but I'm saying, like, that could be a start until we get some more of this information. Um, because, I mean, it's still a 30-acre piece. It's a pretty big piece. So I just, yeah, I think we need to know a little bit more information just to make sure we don't cause some strange scenario that another council has to deal with 15 years from now. <laughs> That's fair and uh, forward-looking. So, so in that regard, I, I think I'm seeing um, interest for staff to uh, respond and get a little bit more information from the, um, the interested party. So I will read the re resolution uh, with request as option C, request additional information from the application. So moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Martin Lang. Be it resolved that staff report 78, 2023 be received and that the Council of the Township of South Hungary with respect to alter or, or, sorry, respect to the request to alter unopened road allowance identified as pin 67137-0088 East from Fifth Line Road uh, that we select option C, request additional information from the applicant. All those in favor of this motion is read. Any if opposed, seeing none, carried. We will move to bylaws, CIP uh, agreement with AL McDonald Grocery Store. Moved by Trevor Bougie, seconded by Stephanie Jagorski. Be it resolved that Staff Report 79, 2023 be received in the bylaw 36, 2023, being a bylaw to enter into a CIP agreement with Betty McDonald, be read a first, second, and third time pass signed and sealed in open council this fifth day of June, 2023, and furthermore, that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign all applicable mill documents. Uh, Ms. Treverton? Through you, Mayor McDonald. Um, so we received a community improvement plan application from um, A.L. McDonald grocery store in Williamstown. Um, and it was through, uh, it was for program two building improvement and it was, uh, and that's a grant application. And the purpose was to remove damaged and peeling paint and repaint the, repaint the roof surface. Um, this was brought forward before the um, CPAC committee, so it's the Community Improvement uh, Advisory Committee, and they reviewed the application and to ensure that it met the program criteria, and they felt that it was well aligned with the program criteria and the goals of it, and that it met the um, object, one of the objectives of the program to improve the aesthetic appeal of our villages. The CPAC um, recommended that this project, uh, recommended the project to council to approve a grant in the amount of $2,325, which is, represents 50% of the cost to get the roof repainted. Do you have any questions? All right, all those in favor of the resolution is read. Any if opposed? Seeing none, great news for Williamstown. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bylaw 8B, appointment of Deputy Chief Building Official, Mr. Rabbi, moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Trevor Bougie. Be it resolved that Staff Report 80, 2023, be received in the Bylaw 37, 2023, being a bylaw to provide for the appointment of a Deputy Building or Deputy Chief Building Official, 
be read a first, second, and third time passed, signed, and sealed in open council this fifth day of June, 2023. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the staff reports in regards to the appointment of a new deputy chief building official. So the planning, or as council is aware, the planning, building, and enforcement department recently hired uh, Michael Hodge as the new deputy CBO. One of the duties of council is to appoint building inspectors as are necessary for the enforcement of the Building Code Act within our area of jurisdiction. So that's the reason for the, uh, the report here tonight. Just to give council a little bit of background about Mr. Hodge, um, he was recently employed with the City of Cornwall as a building official, where he spent uh, seven years with both Public Works and Building Department. He has a long list of uh, qualifications, uh, which includes CBO Legal, House, small buildings, HVAC house, building structural, plumbing all buildings, large buildings, complex buildings, building services, and detection lighting and power. And he's also a certified engineering technologist. So the, the building department is excited to, uh, to welcome Mr. Hodge and uh, I guess the, the first order of business is to appoint him. Are there any questions or comments from around the table? Okay, all those in favor of the motion is read. Any of opposed? Seeing none, carried. Next up is the appointment of the building inspector. Moved by Stephanie Jaworski, seconded by Trevor Bougie. Be it resolved that Staff Report 81 2023 be received and that Bylaw 38 2023, being a bylaw to appoint a building inspector, be read a first, second, and third time, passed, signed, and sealed, and open council this fifth day of June 2023. Mr. Rabbi? So, th through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, the staff report uh, is also. Uh, to, uh, to appoint a building inspector. Our current uh, building information officer, uh, Erica Rose Burgess, recently uh, went above and uh, beyond, if you will, to, to complete uh, two Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing qualifications, those being general legal and HVAC house. Uh, so these qualifications will allow uh, her to, uh, to build on her knowledge of the Building Code Act as well as the Building Code and to take on additional duties. It's, uh, it's staff's um, uh, intention to en uh, enroll Ms. Burgess within the OBOA's internship program, which will allow her to obtain more qualifications while assisting the chief building official and deputy chief bu building official with plans review and uh, inspections just to uh, improve uh, service within our department. Uh, so that's the reason for uh, her appointment. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the table? Deputy Mayor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We don't get to see Mr. Rabbit here that often. I didn't want to let him off without anything. <laughs> but uh, um, the building department is an area that, uh, since I've been on, that I've been very pleased with. That it's 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 it it's moving forward. It's been very busy the last few years, and very very few complaints have come to myself at least. And I think the rest of the council is likely going to echo that. So. I'm happy with what you guys have been doing. Continue the good work, and uh, you know, glad to see we're we're moving people up slowly, and uh, you know, hopefully with the right culture and uh, moving this township forward at the same time. So appreciate it. Oh, great, great news. Um, so, all those in favor of, of the resolution, as oh, sorry, yes, all those in favor of the resolution as carried, as read. <laughs> carried. Thank you very much. Bylaw 8D, Filio Drain Engineers Report, third and final reading. So moved by Martin Lang, seconded by Sam McDonnell. Be it resolved that Staff Report 82, 2023, be received in the Bylaw 24, 2023, being a bylaw to provi provide for updates to the Filio Drain pursuant to Section 78 of the Drainage Act, be read a third and final time, passed, signed, and sealed in open council this fifth day of June 2023. Mrs. Combo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Uh, so as council will recall, a couple of months ago, this bylaw was given a first and second reading. Uh, subsequently, we held the quarter of revision meeting on May 1st. There was one appeal that had been received but was withdrawn before uh, the quarter of revision meeting was held. So since that time, the appropriate uh, length of time has passed in terms of the prescribed timeline. So council may now um, give a final third and final reading to this bylaw. Um, 
and yeah, the construction will not start immediately as there is still um, one more opportunity where someone can file a notice of intention to quash the bylaw within 10 days of the third reading. Uh, if that does not occur 10 days after um, the third reading, they can proceed with the works. Are there any questions or comments of council? May I just ask a procedural one because there, there was a resident and it might be something of, of Ms. McDonald or, or yourself depending, who, who had a, re a question about a green road uh, and it was a low level crossing and I, I believe the time and place for that has passed. I just, if it hasn't, um, I would ask because I, I hadn't reached out to that individual um, back again. Um, if we could defer it, but if it, if that procedural time has passed, then I guess it's water under the bridge, so to speak. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the short answer is that it has passed, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. McDonald, but in reference to a green road, that would be owned by the township, correct? So it, it, I would not see any reason why someone would appeal something related to a green road, because there would be no cost to any taxpayer on that, or directly, I, you know what I mean? Yep. Thank you. I did see Councillor uh, McDonnell's uh, hand up. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I think that's a question for Ms. McDonald. Are, are we seeing a thumbs up as there's no cost to a landowner? Uh, like the landowner is not to pay the cost of uh, changing the culvert, say, on a green road on the municipal drain? Or she? Just a communication, did uh, Ms. McDonald disappear or, oh, she's coming on full screen. Can you hear us? Oh, there we are. You, you, you just came on there for a second. Perfect, short and easy. Makes your makes your conversation very easy, Mr. McDonald. And thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to be sure that I like I wasn't hanging something up because of uh, not making a moment. So, uh, regardless, the then is not really an option I want to take. So, all those in favor of the resolution as as read. Okay, uh, <laughs> unopposed. Carried. All right, moving into items for consideration. Um, the ones moved from the consent agenda. I'll just read them out, then we'll go through them afterwards. So 10A, 2022 South Glengarry Data Call Recycling Overview. Uh, 10B, Boil Water Advisory. 10C, Glen Walter Water Tower Public Information Center Summary. 10M, Women of Ontario Say No. 10Q, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing Letter Resolution Retain Surplus Proceeds from Tax Sale. And 10U, Resolution Insurance cost municipality of Queed, uh, Tweed. So the data call, I, I believe that was, was that Councillor Jaworski? Thank you, through you, Mayor McDonald. No, I just wanted to um, bring it forward because it's the first time we have data that's comparing um, uh, our weekly recycling previous, uh, <coughs> compared to when before we had it since we went to, weekly recycling just uh, basically at the very end of November 2021. So it's interesting to see that we have, uh, we definitely have increased our tons. It'll be interesting to see how this goes forward for the next, I guess we ha we'll have another year or two of data before we move to uh, producer responsibility. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to, to, to bring that forward. And in if Ms. McDonald had any comments on it, uh, I, I welcome those two. I mean, it is, we do see that collection costs do go up because now we're doing, you know, we, we are doing more, um, we're doubling the, the service level. But, uh, but again, you know, it's, uh, it's about keeping our very expensive landfills, how to extend their, their life. So uh, there's certainly benefit to that as well. And 
it wasn't just increasing the the um, frequency of, of pickup. Also, we did have in significant fuel increases with fuel adjustment factors over the last year in 2022. So that's something also to keep in mind. Thanks. Ms. McDonald, do you have something to add? Okay, thank you. Boil water advisory, I believe that was Mr. Bougie. Councillor Bougie. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to uh, uh, bring this, I guess, to everyone's attention and maybe to the residents more so that uh, when a water boil advisory is given, there's many steps to be taken depending on uh, the issue. And I don't see uh, Mr. Sagan here, but uh, um, their team work extremely hard in these situations to make sure that uh, the water is safe for all the residents depending on the situation uh, and then you can see that uh, the buoyant alert app has been used very well used in the residents so if any residents watch and don't have it they should look into it to get the instant notification of any issues going on in their area um, so I just wanted to kind of promote that a little bit and uh, you know with the uh, safe water and boil water advisory, it's uh, it's a good partnership between the township and Eastern Ontario Health Unit, and these steps are need to be taken to make sure the water is safe for all the residents. And uh, it's uh, it's a great report, and it's well laid out as the steps we need to take. Uh, thank you. I believe you also had water towers, public information center, Jean-Marie. Yes, through Mr. Mayor, uh, the presentation was uh, at the Glen Walter. Uh, fire station. I think all of council was there and attended and it was very well attended by residents. Um, and I mean, it's kind of a good segue because with this water tower, the pressure in the in the system is going to be increased and hopefully uh, uh, less issues. Um, I know Ms. maybe Ms. McDonald wants to add on onto this as well, but I know uh, there was some great modeling as to what it could potentially look like. And uh, like I said, I think the Voyant Alert app was used to promote it. And there was a lot of uh, residents that attended. And uh, just one thing to note as well, the, the one water tower that was recently built in, I think Lucknow, Ontario, was around $6 million, which is fairly high, uh, well, well above our budget. But the one in Maxville that was recently built was around $2.5 million. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll be successful in uh, a good bid when the time comes. Uh, we can hope for that. Deputy Mayor Lang, and then uh, we'll see if Ms. McDonald has a comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. And uh, thank you, Mr. Bougie, for bringing them forward. Um, both uh, are related. Um, the boil water advisory we likely wouldn't have had to do if we'd had the water tower in place because it would have kept our pressure up. And uh, it was simply because pressure had gotten low. And uh, I know there was a, a smaller incident that didn't result in a boil water advisory on Sunday, yesterday, actually. And, uh, but the, our staff was on hand to get it, uh, and it, but it was something similar where we lost uh, one phase of our power and the generator, but it came right back, so the generator doesn't fire up to take over. So it, that's twice in a, in a matter of a few weeks, so I'm hopeful that staff will bring us something, look into it, bring us something. If there is a, a fix for that until the water tower is up and running, I don't know if we need to talk to our electricians or whoever, but uh, because water is as everyone here knows, is one of the things that uh, council needs to really pay attention to. We are directly responsible if anything does go wrong. So having no, knowing that there's two incidents in the last uh, few weeks, I'm hopeful that we can uh, look into it and see if there is anything that, uh, that we can do to, to make that uh, not happen again. Ms. McDonald, did you have a comment? Oh, okay, I, and, and this one, we, I thought I heard no at the start. I couldn't hear the rest of it, so we're going to move on to the next one. The service isn't great there. Uh, women of Ontario say no. Was that Deputy Mayor Lang? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you. Let's see, where is it here? What page is it on? 13. Anyway, I just, I think that as, uh, as municipal councillors, I think we should at least be held to the same account as our staff. We should at least follow the same policies. And I don't think that uh, councillors should get a free ride that if there, you know, if there's uh, harassment or this sort of thing going on that, uh, you know, 
It's basically a slap on the wrist and the most that they can do is three months with no pay. The pay's not that great to start with, so it's really not any kind of a deterrent to anybody. So I just, I'm supporting it. I think it would be nice that, you know, if we would set the example and that we have uh, policies for our staff and I think the municipal councillors throughout the province should at least be up to that standard. And if I may add, the 10Y, there is a resolution of support, I believe, from the municipality of Castleman that we might want to uh, piggyback on to, to shortcut that one. And it was brought to my attention um, in a conversation that uh, imagine having to, if you are um, um, abused by a local leader, they have three months off and then they're right back there in the office. And it's kind of hard to uh, reconcile, you know, telling on somebody that's going to be back in six months and it's your supervisor or your supervisor, supervisor. So it's, I think it's the right thing to do, um, given the power that's, uh, that is had by council in that regard. Uh, 10Q uh, was, oh, oh, sorry. Councillor Jaworski. No, th I wanted to thank Deputy Mayor Lang for bringing this one forward, and I completely agree that, yeah, I think the behavior of elected officials when it comes to harassment and abuse, we should be held to at least the same standard as our staff. And I, I think, though, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, like Bill 5, like most of the advocacy work on Bill 5 has already been done, and it was actually voted down in the legislature. But um, I still, th I hear rumblings that perhaps the government will be bringing forward a, a bill that's similar. So I still think it is important that, if, you know, as a council, if we support this, I do, um, that we still, um, you know, express that to uh, the province so that there is some, you know, pressure, I guess, if it, if it is moving forward, that we help it keep moving forward. Okay, then I think it is at least the will of council as a whole to, um, to move that um, support forward. The next one was uh, the retention of surplus proceeds from tax sales. I, I believe I pulled that forward. So um, the wonderful thing about tax sales is the township does all the work and it used to come back to township coffers, um, the surplus sales, but they weren't, uh, they weren't claimed by an interested party, being the bank, the uh, owner, or an uh, I guess interested party would sum them all up. Uh, so. Um, I don't know if council has an interest in the resolution of that because uh, as of 2018, uh, the province now just takes that money from the account. So if there's surplus money, it can sit there for a few years. Um, and at the end of that conclusion, it used to go to the township. That's now five years ago. And now it goes to the province. Council Jaworski. Through you, Mayor McDonald, I'd be in support of having a resolution because I think that new process makes absolutely no sense. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And then 10U resolution for insurance costs. I believe that was Councillor Bougie and potentially somebody else. Yep, through you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, first support Tweed in their in their resolution here with uh, <laughs> increased insurance costs. I mean, it's across the province, it's across the country, really, the, the increasing in insurance costs. So I'm wondering if, with the will of council, we would support this and maybe potentially create our own resolution with our our numbers. Um, attached to with it to uh, pass along. I if council would support that. Is anybody interested in that conversation or supporting that? Deputy Mayor Lang, Councilor Jaworski. I don't know what can be done. I know there was some talk at one point about, um, you know, not, yeah, us not being sued for every little thing. We're just because, you know, so whether they could put in legislation that would help with that, I think that's been spoken to before, but I, I, I do think it's an issue for us. And I think if, if we can, if, the, if there is things province can do to help, I'm in favor of. Councilor Jaworski, and then uh, I think uh, Mr. Jane has a comment. Okay, after. thank you, through you, Mayor McDonald. No, I mean, I'm in support of this. I just sat, I sort of what uh, Deputy Mayor Lang is saying, like this has been talked about for a while, and so there may be an element of us here beating a dead horse, but I mean, it's, it's just getting worse. So there's talk all the time of if there's something that could be done to joint and several liability. And I'm not entirely sure why we're not getting a clear answer on that either about whether it can or cannot be done. But I think it definitely, if it can, should get on it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Jane? Through you, Mr. Mayor, just a few comments on uh, insurance and the municipality of Tweed. So the municipality of Tweed has uh, been fighting the good fight against increased insurance premiums uh, for some time now. 
they uh, actually wrote to uh, Doug Ford back in March 10th of 2021 regarding uh, joint and several liability in much the same manner that, that they're, they're writing now. And in re-reviewing uh, the letter that was sent to Doug Ford, it does seem like the municipality of Tweed has been, been hit quite hard um, with regards to their insurance premium increases. Um, and quite honestly, those increases have been something that um, other municipalities of relative size have not experienced. So uh, I commend the municipality of Tweed for fighting the good fight. I'm not sure what uh, resulted from the letter that they wrote to uh, Doug Ford. Uh, if I had to guess, not much movement was made there. Uh, my experience in, in insurance has really taught me that it really is a one-sided market. It's a, it's a take it or leave it exercise. And um, us as, as municipalities, I sincerely don't see us moving the needle in that regard. Um, that being said, we are due for our insurance renewals um, on at the end of August. And uh, uh, whatever our next um, uh, level of premiums are, we can, we're happy to report back to council to see what that increase will be. Thank you. Councilor McAnell. Three, Mr. Mayor, not to belabor this, but I believe Tweed was hit by that uh, the tornado two years ago and the year ago, and they've had a number of uh, uh, freak weather events that just seem to catch them just at the right time in the worst places. So uh, I think that's part of their part of their fight on this, as, as Mr. Jane has said. So <clears throat> personally, I'd love to see our insurance premiums go down, but I don't think right that it's worth the paper we're going to write it on. But can't hurt to send the letter. Okay, then I suppose there's support around the table, um, despite some hesitations as to what uh, what the outcome will be. But uh, if we can help the fight, then. All right. So that's the end of the items pulled from consent to items for consideration. So then, moved by Stephanie Jaworski, seconded by Sam McDonnell, be it resolved that the council accepts. Items listed on the consent agenda. All those in favor? Any if opposed, seeing none, carried. So we will now be going into closed session for a brief moment. We will return uh, to live after we're done discussing it. Um, oh, just one moment. All right, moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Trevor Bougie. Be it resolved that council convene to close session at 8.56 p.m. to discuss the following items under section 2392 of the Municipal Act SO 2001. A meeting or a part of a meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered is personal matters about an identifiable individual, specifically committee applications or committee applicants. All those in favor? Any if opposed? Seeing none, carried.
Moved by Sam McDonnell, seconded by Stephanie Jaworski. Be it resolved that council rise and reconvene at 9.08 p.m. into open session without reporting. All those in favor? 